New York Knicks fans haven't had too much to root for over the past decade. However, for one stretch in 2012, Jeremy Lin changed that. Now, more than 10 years later, Jeremy Lin's inspiring story of his ascension in the NBA during the 2011-2012 season will be highlighted through a new documentary that's set to release on HBO Max. The upcoming film is titled 38 at the Garden, as it refers to Lin's show-stopping performance against the late Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers on February 10, 2012. Welcome to the Free Dawkins channel, here we break down the timeline of Jeremy Lin's rise to Lin's sanity. After being waived by the Rockets, Lin was picked up by the Knicks merely days after the lockout, truncated season began. New York only latched onto the then relatively unknown Lin in hopes of simply adding some depth at the point guard position. Baron Davis was still rehabilitating a herniated disc, Shumpert had gone down for the first time, Mike Bibby was old and Tony Douglas wasn't a true facilitator. Despite the Knicks' decimated backcourt, Lin wasn't supposed to receive any playing time. He was wildly unproven and had been cut by multiple teams in a span of months. Nobody thought Lin had serious value to bring to the Knicks. Here's how ESPN's Mark Stein explained the Knicks' situation the day they signed Lin. Just how long the Knicks plan to keep Lin is unclear. His contract is not guaranteed, so the Knicks can waive him at any time prior to February 10th without having to pay the remainder of his contract. If and when Shumpert returns from his injury, he will likely resume his role as one of the team's three-point guards, leaving Lin as the odd man out. Prior to New York's matchup against the then New Jersey Nets in February of 2012, Lin had appeared in just nine games. In those nine games, Lin played more than 10 minutes just once, a contest in which he logged 20 minutes against Houston. After losing 11 of their last 13 games, however, the Knicks and Mike D'Antoni were looking to shake things up against the Nets, and Jeremy Lin emerged. And again, Mike, look who's coming in. Jeremy Lin, and you're a pretty big ovation. Mike D'Antoni hoping to get Lin, who does a pretty good job of penetration and getting in the paint. He played 36 minutes, dropped 25 points, and dished out 7 assists on 52.6% shooting from the field. Alley up to Chandler! Oh, beautiful pass from Lin! Jeremy Lin right now looks absolutely spent. Bumped by Petro, gets to the rim, count it, and a foul! Jeremy, Jeremy, that's what the fans are cheering here, Clyde. Again, the crossover, the basket, puts it up, puts it in! Jeremy Lin with 25! A magical night for Jeremy Lin. He's the hero from Harvard as the Knicks get a much-needed victory on the game of his life, and he is swarmed by his ecstatic teammates and a jubilant crowd here at Madison Square Garden. Naturally, there was some cause for excitement, but not much. It was one game from one undrafted athlete. It could have meant nothing. As it turned out, this was a start for one of the craziest periods the NBA world has seen. Lin followed up his improbable performance against New Jersey with another terrific outing against the Utah Jazz. Lin splits the defenders, gets inside, lefty layup, puts it in! Sensational move from Jeremy Lin! Lin gets hit, puts it in, and a foul! Lin has to put it up, bang! A three-pointer as the shot clock expired! The magic of Jeremy Lin continues here at Madison Square Garden, and he is loving every second of it, Jeremy Lin with his second consecutive career night. He is the new starting point guard of the Knicks. The point guard torched Utah for 28 points and eight assists in 45 minutes of action. He led the Knicks to a second straight victory and thus began to pique the curiosity of both New York and the rest of the league. Lynn added to his intrigue when he took his still untested talents to face the Washington Wizards. Yet again, he rose to the occasion, carving up the John Wall-led Wizards with 23 points and 10 assists. He put the exclamation point on his performance and the Knicks' third straight victory with a driving dunk. Lynn drives and finishes! There's the dunk you talked about, Clyde! Jeremy Lynn fires up the crowd! This sounded like the Garden, so many fans on their feet on that play. It was then, as he rose off the floor and made contact with the rim that the world began to know something special was happening. Lin's run was bound to come to an end, and many had that end pegged for the February game against the Los Angeles Lakers. The Knicks were riding a three-game win streak, but Kobe Bryant and company smelled blood. The Lakers were coming to play on Kobe's favorite stage against a team that was without both Anthony and Stoudemire. On paper, the Knicks didn't stand a chance, but then Lin's sanity happened. Lin puts it up! Puts it in! Jeremy Lin off to a terrific start! Seven points and two assists! Come turnaround shot, gets to the go! Lin likes the open floor, spinning, puts it up and oh, banks it in! Yes. Sensational play for Jeremy Lin! The soul is on Lin. Crown wants him, puts up the two-pointer, puts it in! Oh. Jeremy Lin with 31! Lin for three! Bang! The Jeremy Lin show continues here at Madison Square Garden! Lin on the drive, gets inside, banks it in! Wow! 
Linsanity continues here at Madison Square Garden as the undrafted point guard from Harvard electrifies MSG once again. Lynn stole Bryant's show, putting up a career-high 38 points and 7 assists, leading the Knicks to their fourth straight victory. It was a win that meant the Knicks were back, and a win that meant Lynn was here to stay. In his first three starts, Jeremy Lynn's out-of-nowhere emergence all but saved the New York Knicks season. In his fourth, his teammates returned the favor. Lynn hit a free throw with 4.9 seconds left to overcome a dreadful second half and lift the Knicks to their fifth straight victory, 100-98, over the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Knicks have stolen one here in Minneapolis. It's their fifth straight win, their longest of the season. The Knicks were lost at 8-15, and 15, with rumors of Mike D'Antoni's job security swirling before the coach moved to Lynn out of desperation. Lynn reignited a basketball-loving city's enthusiasm for the game, helped fill the league's void in Asia after Yao Ming's retirement, and saved the Knicks' season. In his fourth start, Lynn was drawing the casual fan even in road games. He was cheered heartily in pre-game introductions and gave the curious crowd exactly what it was looking for. His quickness gave Timberwolves guard Ricky Rubio fits on defense, and he scored in every manner imaginable. Lynn Sanity finished with 20 points, 8 assists, and 3 steals and got his coach hyped with his play. He's terrific, and just his leadership, and I know he got a little tired, but uh, his leadership on the floor is invaluable, and that's why sometimes we have to ride him. By now, Lynn had led the Knicks to five straight victories and was rewarded with the Eastern Conference Player of the Week honors. During this five-game span, he was averaging 26.8 points, 7.8 assists, and 4.2 boards per game. The Knicks were 5-0 since he had been inserted into the rotation, and he had led the way every step. Most notably, though, he and the Knicks had accomplished all this without Umari Stoudemire, and most of it without Carmelo Anthony. On February 14th, Linsanity had already reached a fever pitch and a game-winning triple against the Toronto Raptors wasn't necessary to grow the already outsized legend, but Lynn hit one anyway. The crowd on its feet here at the Air Canada Center. Lynn puts it up. Bang! Jeremy Lynn from downtown! And the Knicks take the lead! Amazing here at the Air Canada Center. Lynn Sanity continues. Lynn waved away incoming screens with the score tied and the clock waning and delivered a game-winning triple just before the buzzer. He finished with 27 points and 11 assists for the Knicks, who got their sixth straight victory. After a win over the Sacramento Kings to push the Lynn-led Knicks to 7-0, Linsanity's run at perfection came to an end against New Orleans. New York lost what could only be considered a heartbreaker. Lynn scored 26 points and dished out five dimes, but he coughed the ball up nine times, thus allowing his critics to resurface. This wasn't the end of Lynn's sanity, though. One game after a productively inefficient outing against the New Orleans Hornets, the point guard picked apart the Dallas Mavericks for 28 points and 14 assists, leading the Knicks to yet another win. Lynn the steal to the basket! Lynn over Dirk. After the final buzzer, Lynn got a hug from a fellow Bay Area product and someone who knows a thing or two about playing the point, Mavs star Jason Kidd. He looks a little bit like Steve Nash out there, Kidd said, referring to the two-time MVP of the Phoenix Suns. By the time Carmelo Anthony was ready to return to action, the Knicks were 8-1 and one in the Linsanity era. Though some believed that Anthony would only help the young point guard by giving him a prolific scorer to dish off to, others feared that Melo's presence would crush Lynn and therefore, the Knicks. Anthony's return did exactly that, as Jeremy Lin and New York came up short against the Nets the second time around. Umari Stoudemire had been back for a few games, and his presence had only enhanced Lin and the Knicks' offensive attack. The fact that the team appeared so unimpressive after Anthony re-entered the fold was cause for panic. Ahead of the Heat-Knicks game on February 23rd, the Heat stars were respectful, but seemed to downplay the importance of guarding Lin. It's not about Jeremy Lin versus LeBron James. It's the Miami Heat versus the New York Knicks, said Dwayne Wade. That sounds nice, but in truth, Wade and James argued over who would get to guard Lynn. The Heat clearly didn't appreciate being asked about how they'd handle someone that wasn't anywhere in their league, and they showed it. The Heat built their entire defense around ruining Lynn's night. Their point guards picked up Lynn at full court and attacked his dribble. Turnovers were the one wart Lynn had during the magical run, and the Heat exposed this to great effect. Every time Lin tried to run his bread and butter high pick and roll, the Heat would launch both defenders at him with a hard trap. If he was able to find a path to the rim, the Heat were there to meet him to either draw a charge, challenge the shot or deflect the meager kick out Lin was attempting. Lin, for all of his craft and timing, wasn't athletic enough to handle it. The Heat were built to end all of the nonsense. They had terrifying athleticism and length on the perimeter, and bigs that could trap nearly out to half court and still recover back to their man. Lin didn't have a chance. 
He made his first field goal attempt before missing his next 10, and Miami forced eight turnovers to only three assists in a 102-88 heat blowout win. I felt like they were all like hawks circling me and staring, he said after the game. Lynn had strong performances later into the season after the Miami beatdown, but the mystique had gone. On March 24, 2012 Lynn was forced out of a game against the Detroit Pistons because of soreness in his right knee. At the time, it was an injury that was being monitored day to day. The hope was that Lynn would be able to return in a game. But a game became games, and panic began to spread. After a week marked by constant hope, the Knicks' worst fears were confirmed. The team announced that Jeremy Lin would be undergoing surgery to repair a torn meniscus in his left knee and that his recovery time was about six weeks. This all but ended any hope New York and its fans had of seeing Lin play again that season. Staring down the barrel of April, six weeks was not a timetable that favored a return. Not unless the Knicks went on an improbable playoff run. Despite a late surge of optimism, Lin was unable to return in time for the playoffs. Though there was hope with each passing game in the first round series against the Miami Heat that Lin was healthy enough to play, he ultimately wound up watching New York fall in five games from the bench. As disappointing as it was, though, there was plenty of hope. The Knicks were obviously going to do anything they could to re-sign Lin and continue to develop him into a star. This injury was just a minor bump in what was supposed to be a lengthy marriage. In the 2012 offseason the Knicks were allowed to keep their early bird rights on Lin, meaning they'd be able to match any free agent offer sheet he signed with another team. I thought the Knicks, the Knicks were going to match me. Um, they told me they were going to match me. I just assumed it. Like I didn't understand what was happening, and uh, and I still don't know to this day. There wasn't exactly a flood of suitors for Lynn's services, but the Houston Rockets eventually inked him to a three-year, $25 million offer sheet. In typical Rockets fashion, the signing was deviously clever. The deal was backloaded, which would have forced the Knicks to pay a hefty tax bill in the contract's final year. Suddenly, New York was weighing its options after shouting from the mountaintop that it would match any offer for its world-famous point guard. Mello chimed in with his two cents, calling the offer sheet ridiculous. If there were any lingering doubts about Mello's feelings toward Lynn, that assessment pretty much erased them. In the end, the Knicks didn't match the offer, and Lynn became a rocket. On July 19, it was official. Lynn's tenure in Houston had begun and the New York Linsanity era was officially over. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Linsanity moment? If you like this video, share, subscribe and hit the like button. For more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Vintage Dawkins and Squad Dawkins and follow us on social media.